Okay, so what we'll be doing today is we are looking at this thing known as ANOVA. So what ANOVA does is, if you think about what we have done in T-Test, T-Test can only test, let's say, is the average of English equals to the average of Chinese, or is the average of English equals to the average of maths. So it's at most two samples. What happens if I have multiple samples? I have four subjects here. Is so can I what is the test that I can use? So the, the test that we use today is called ANOVA. Okay. The ANOVA test is the test for the now hypothesis that all the averages are equal. Okay, equal. What does it mean all averages are equal? It means that the average of English equals to the average of Chinese, equals to the average of maths, equals to the average of science. So it also means that the alternate hypothesis here, alternate hypothesis, is that at least one average is not equal to the rest. So if we reject the null hypothesis, that means if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis, we accept the alternate hypothesis. It, the ANOVA doesn't tell us, okay, ANOVA, ANOVA doesn't tell us which, is, which average is different. It just tells us that one of them can be different. Maybe it's English that's different from the rest. Maybe it's Chinese different from the rest. It also may be too different from the other two. It may be English and Chinese different from maths and science. Okay, so as you can see, when the number of samples increases, it becomes harder to deal with. And in Excel, or rather in this video, we are only dealing with this thing known as a one-way ANOVA. Okay. One-way ANOVA simply means that you are testing for one type of data. It's basically the average of um, four samples. Okay. ANOVA is very flexible. You can go up to two-way and multi-way ANOVA. You can even have eight-way, ten-way ANOVA. It doesn't make a difference. Okay. So what we can see is, let us do the average. Okay. We have done this before many times. Okay. So, Essentially, ANOVA is to test whether are these four average significantly different from each other. Is any one different from each other? We think that, okay, Chinese may be um, different. The average of Chinese may be significantly different from the other three, but we do not know. Let's do ANOVA first. So ANOVA, you have to use your data analysis tab. Go to ANOVA, go to data analysis. Then you just go to the first option, which it says, ANOVA single factor. Single factor means one way ANOVA. Two factor is talking about two way ANOVA. So let's go to the single factor. Now, you just highlight everything. Let's say highlight in all the four um, sets of data. And it's based by columns. So English is one column, Chinese one column, and so on. The label, I highlighted the label. So I click on it. And I have the output range. I just put here. Okay, so this is the result. What does this result mean? Okay. Essentially, you can see that the averages, this is a summary statistic, so the averages is here. Okay. okay, however, what it really does is ANOVA calculate a F statistic and calculate a p-value. So the p-value of 0 0.11 means that, let me just highlight it in, um, let's say, blue. 0 0.11 means that 11% of the chance that the now hypothesis is true. That means even though Chinese has a lower average, there's a chance it's not significantly large enough. Therefore, we cannot reject now hypothesis and we have to accept now hypothesis. Okay, so essentially that's how ANOVA looks like. And now we are actually doing ANOVA based on English, Chinese, maths, and science. 
Can I do the opposite way? Can I actually say that is the average marks of the 10 students different? I can, okay? So let me go to a sheet two, use identical data. I can do the average. Okay, so let me do the average. And now I average based on the student. Okay. So my now hypothesis and outer hypothesis still holds, just that it's interpreted in a different way. Okay. So are all the averages equal? That means are all these averages equal to each other? Or at least outer hypothesis, at least one to be different. So let us repeat the same steps again. All right. So now, instead of highlighting based on um, the subjects, we highlight based on the students. Okay. Group by is group by row. So each row is one student group by row. And we throw our results. Let's say we put our results here. Then we click OK. Now, this is what it generates. You realize that the average is the same as this average. Okay. All right. So we now next we look at the p value. The p value is 0 0.64. That means although there is difference between each one. Okay, but for example, there's almost 10 marks different between let's say Mike and John. But on the whole, there is no difference. Okay? There's 64% probability that the null hypothesis is true. We cannot reject the null hypothesis. Now, someone, one of you may ask, in t-test, we have equal and unequal variance. Okay? For example, in t-test, we have two samples with equal variance or two samples assuming unequal variance. How about ANOVA? ANOVA doesn't have this option. ANOVA always assumes, okay, so let me write, ANOVA always assumes equal variance. Okay, equal variances. Now, this is very important. ANOVA always assumes equal variance. There is no option of unequal variance. So even the variances can be very large or very different. ANOVA doesn't bother with it. ANOVA always assume equal variance. Okay, so that is how you can do ANOVA simply. Um, you can't do ANOVA, or it's actually not easy to do ANOVA using the formula. So this normally using a data analysis tab, this is the easiest way to do it. Okay, so what happens if in the event that you reject the null hypothesis, then you probably have to do T you probably have to do t test, pet t test for each one, which means that you do t test for. Let me go to one. Let's say if you do reject the null hypothesis and accept outer hypothesis, then you have to find out which one is different. You can actually tell that Chinese is different, but you should do t test for English versus Chinese, English versus maths, English versus science, Chinese versus maths, Chinese versus science, maths versus science, and look at the difference. Excel doesn't have other method to do it. You have to do this thing known as a pairwise t-test. In some other software, the second step is called a post hoc test. There's other methods like Tukis, um, HSD, and so on and so forth, which actually works the same way. Okay, that's all that we have for today. Have fun.